Well, hi there, it's Sandy Alnock, and while there are bunnies in this, I'm calling it Color A Copic Arbor. I'm using the arbor and the bunnies from Art Impressions. The bunnies was from a year or two ago, I think they came out, but the arbor is new. So first I'm gonna color the bunnies the way I ended up stamping them. There's four in the little set, and I only had to mask one of the bunnies so that I could have one bunny behind him. And I'm gonna be coloring them in four different types of grays, just so you can get an idea of how different they can feel. Now, I don't know if these Dutch marking bunnies, which I think I talked about that in yesterday's video, these Dutch bunnies may or may not hang out with all the other breeds of bunnies. I don't know how bunnies get along or whether they just hang out with their own kind of bunnies, but they're all gonna be different bunnies because I felt like it and it's a piece of art so I can do what I want. So my bunnies are all universally getting along with all other bunnies. They are very tolerant and kind and loving to all other bunnies of the world. This little bunny has a tail on the side. I'm not really sure how his, his tail is like off to the wrong direction. Feels like it should be moved to the back farther. Maybe I'm just seeing something that isn't a thing and that sort of thing. Maybe that tail is really where it should be, but we're just gonna call him Broken Tail Bunny. So we'll give him his own little name. A uh, little pet peeve I have is the second side of ears. If you've got any pink inside of an ear, an opening in the ear, then the opposite ear opens the opposite direction. So if it's opening toward the back, it wouldn't be pink in there. So that's my little, my little tip for you. <laughs> when you have the second ear, usually you don't see the insides of both of them, unless it's the bunny in the middle. The bunny in the middle has both of his ears pointing forward so he can hear. So he would have, uh, have the opening for both of his little ears coming that way. So. So we had the neutrals, the bunny on the right was the warm grays, the one in the back is the cool grays, and this is the toner grays. You do not need them all. If you are trying to buy Copic markers, I would get some warms and some cools and call it done. The toners and the neutrals, eh. I'm not sure that I, I use them enough to call them worthwhile. I mean, I use them because I'm using them because they're inked up in my other grays may run out of ink, but that's really all I use them for. It's not like I sit there and think, I totally need a toner gray for this particular thing. I don't ever have that thought. It's usually just grabbing whichever one is nearest when it comes time to figuring out what colors I'm gonna use. So don't sweat the T's and the ends. So I put a little bit of color down here at the base because my plan was to cut the bunnies out and to fussy cut them, what I do is cut off that giant chunk at the top because it makes it a little easier to get scissors into this little section to cut out the little bits. And I turn the, uh, the scissors kind of and turn the paper, not in a way that is gonna twist my wrist off, but usually the paper goes around a little bit more and the scissor hand stays a little bit more still. And uh, you can see it, it makes a pretty decent little line. So I have them all cut out and I'm going to start preparing to put my arbor in the back. So I took some double stick uh, score, score sheet. It's like score tape, but on a sheet. And these are some of the dies. And you can see the elegant shapes that they have. They're very detailed. And these are from Art Impressions and they're intended to be used for watercolor, but I'm gonna use them for this Copic card. And I'm also, since I have a little room on this one, I also cut out the fence and the little bird bath, or the bird bath, the little bird on a on a wire, whatever that thing is, that little hanging bird bird cage, and also one of the just plain old bird cages. There's a couple other sets that they have with these dies now. Some of them come with stamps and dies, and some of them are just the dies. So pay attention to what you're buying. I'll have them all linked in the doobly doo, even though I don't have all of them done as samples to show you. But for this, I wanted to indicate for myself where the arbor is. So I decided to put a sky in the back and I airbrushed a little sky over top. You could also do this with some inks if you would like. You know, if you have inking techniques you can do, just don't press the sticker down because when you die cut this with the sticky on the back, it makes a sticker out of it and you don't want it stuck down yet because the first coloring is better done underneath of the die. 
before you get that part going. And what I started off with was making kind of a, a wacky S so that I was making a vine that would just trans translate all around the different sections of the arbor itself. And it would look like it's winding front and back and all the way around, etc. You generally wouldn't have flowers maybe on every single bit of it. So it's kind of nice to let some of that detail show through. I did check that my bunnies were going to fit where they needed to at the bottom and made sure that the grass was going to, to work there. The top section, the light green color that I used, I ended up with just making a really loose kind of, kind of swag shape and then took a darker color and used smaller marker lines to do this and just made my own little flowers. Now you could look at the other art impression stamps and make marks that look like those in order to create flowers. You could also, if you've taken my Copic wildflowers classes, there's all kinds of wildflower shapes that you could use for this. But really it doesn't matter a whole lot. I'm just making dots in a bunch of cases. I'm just clustering them so that they look like flowers instead of making it look like just a cacophony of color. And uh, just different kinds of colors, a couple pinks, do a chunk of yellow because everything has to have yellow in it because that's how I roll, put some lighter, smaller flowers down at the bottom, and then stick the, the actual sticker down there. And I went in with some of the darker colors, I guess the darker green, to fill in some areas and squinted at it to see if there were places that needed to have some darkness, like underneath where the arch curves over, looked like it needed to look like there was a shadow there. And then I could glue my little bunnies panel in the front and just use some dimensional adhesive to pop that up. I did trim it down a little bit, trim down the edges um, so that it's gonna get a little bit smaller. And since I knew I was gonna be trimming it down, I didn't have to color all the way to the edge. So here I finished off that coloring that I started with. I wasn't sure whether I was gonna add flowers and grasses in the front or whether I wanted to retain that neutral color at the bottom. So. I did decide the neutral would be better, but here's some of the other dyes. You can see they, they come out kind of cool. There's a chair. There's also a whole uh, gazebo that has a die. You could cut this thing out with, but I made these three sample cards with a couple of these, the ones that I had cut out from that one piece of brown paper while I had it all glued up with that score tape. And uh, yeah, my finished little bunny card for bunny week i've got more bunny videos all week long so make sure you stay tuned and i will see you again very soon like tomorrow with more bunnies and if not if you're watching this at another time i'll see you in a couple of days because i usually do monday wednesday friday videos all right guys i'll see you later bye